welcome to Ritus.com Java tutorial. Um, we'll continue discussing about encapsulation. Encapsulation is basically um, the concept of hiding uh, as much information as possible inside the class itself. So a class basically should not expose uh, any information outside itself except the methods. So like any class which uses student should not know anything other than set name and get name so that's basically the concept of encapsulation that which we discussed in the uh, last tutorial uh, also we'll discuss few more examples of uh, encapsulation um, a probably even more appropriate examples of encapsulation a little later during this tutorial now let's turn our focus towards something called a constructor um, can there be a student without a name usually not so what actually we can make is uh, make uh, somebody to give name as a parameter to the construction of the student right now the way we are doing it is we are creating a student and then we are setting its name as John so that's basically two steps so we create a student and then do a set name the other way of doing it is actually uh, creating a student directly with name. So what I'm doing is actually taking John and passing it as a parameter directly to uh, the new student method. Um, and I'm going to comment the student dot set name line for now. So what happens now is you get a compilation error, obviously, because the student uh, string is not defined. But when we had just this, it compiles. So where is that magic method in here? The magic method which we are talking about is called a constructor. So even though we didn't create a method uh, here, actually Java by automatically defines this method, which is called a default constructor. So even though you don't see anything inside, this class actually uh, Java gives this class a default constructor uh, how does it happen every class in Java actually extends a class called object so every class extends object uh, even though I didn't specify anything in here it's actually present if, if you look at it there is an object called java there's a class called java.blank.object where a lot of default behavior for a class is configured so one of the things which you get back get as a reason of extending this object is a default constructor what is extending what is this stuff complicated no actually we'll talk a lot about extension inheritance and stuff later but for now all that you need to know is any class you get uh, any class you create in java extends a class or call object so it gets all its basic functionality from the class called object um, the other fact is uh, you have a default constructor uh, the default constructor also a class gets from object and the default constructor doesn't do anything it just uh, allows you to be able to create that object um, now we can go ahead and create a new constructor so if I want to add any arguments to the constructor I have to go in and create it so now I have added in John as a new argument to the student so I press con uh, control 1 or command 1 and I would say create constructor student string so that basically creates the constructor for student I want to leave it public uh, it, I can't rename it because it's a constructor it has to have the same name as uh, the class a constructor should have the same name as the class and I want a string the name of this is string name because I'm going to pass in the name and I want to set in the constructor this dot name the name this dot name refers to the member variable as we discussed earlier so this dot name is equal to name when I say just name it's the value from the argument so the value of the argument name is assigned 
to the member variable name and that uh, helps us to create a student with name. The other thing you can notice now is I can save this and it compiles. The other thing it can actually notice now is I, if I remove John, the, co the code doesn't compile. This was compiling earlier. This is because when you provide any constructor, then Java assumes that you would also provide a default constructor if you want it. So when you define a constructor, the thing Java does is remove the access to the default constructor. So when you are defining even one constructor, Java removes the access to default constructor and you will not be able to use the default constructor anymore. So that's an important thing. So uh, let's move on. We want to create a new student called John and what we have done in here is actually directly uh, create a student with John. So probably when if we set the name at the time of creation, we don't need the set method anymore. So I'll remove this method. So all that there is now is a name and a get name. And so this is basically the test. I would remove this line also, command D, control D, whichever key you use depending on your operating system. So now just do run as JUnit test and let's see if this test succeeds. So the test succeeds. So the creation of the student with the name John sets it named to John. That's perfect. Uh, the other thing uh, which we would frequently do is use shortcuts. So what's the shortcut for running a JUnit? It's command Alt Shift X. So if you press Alt Shift X and then press T, okay. Um, we are doing a lot of stuff using Eclipse and Eclipse offers us a lot of keyboard shortcuts. So how do I know what are the keyboard shortcuts which are present? The way it is, the way you can access the keyboard shortcuts is through Control Shift L. If you press Control Shift L, Eclipse brings up a way like all the keyboard shortcuts which are present in Eclipse and you can use whichever keyboard shortcut you'd want to uh, do the functionality uh, using a keyboard shortcut it's a lot of it's a lot more productive than typing everything out and that's what we have been doing over this tutorial where we don't create the method actually we do the we just do the invocation let there be a compilation error and then let eclipse de create the method for us and similarly there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts which you are looking at right now so one such shortcut is uh, to be able to run a J unit. So, okay, now that we have the ability to create a student using a constructor, let's now think about uh, adding a little bit more functionality to the student class. Um, how about storing uh, the number of marks that a student has got in mathematics? So, let's say John got 25 marks in mathematics, and let's see how we can store that into the student class. So, obviously, uh, we are doing test driven development so let's write the test for it first student dot uh, let's now set I want to set the value of marks he got in math so I'll call uh, probably math marks so set math marks uh, I wanted to set it to 25 because that's the amount of marks he got and once we have the marks added in I can actually assert uh, that the marks are 25. So expected is 25. And what I want to do is student dot get math marks. So if I do student dot get math marks, I should be getting 25 back. That's basically what we are setting in here. Let's see how it goes. Uh, I'll use the keyboard shortcuts, control E, command E uh, to go to the student class. And uh, now I would add a variable called. Earlier we took the uh, approach of using control one on student test to create these methods. Now we'll take a different approach. So I'll use private. Um, it's mathematics marks. So probably I'll use uh, integers to store it. Integers is really big. There are things like bytes which help us store it. But for now, to keep it simple, I'll just store it in an integer. So it's private. We want to create the data encapsulated. So we call it private. And int is the type of this variable and then the number of marks. So I want to call it math 
marks because those are the mar math marks in mathematics. So math marks and now uh, Eclipse is a very good IDE. It has a feature of creating the setters and getters by itself. So as soon as I create a variable, just do a right click source. So right click source, it shows the keyboard shortcut for it also. So the keyboard shortcut here, which you see on the board is command alt s. If you are using, uh, uh, if you are using um, Eclipse in Windows, then probably it's control, um, control alt s. Use that and you can actually do generate and getters and setters. So just do generate getters and setters and do, uh, we already have the getters and setters for, uh, we have the set uh, getters for name, but not the setter. So it would show the set method to be able to, I mean, it will ask us if we want to create the set method for name, we don't want it. All that we want is the getters and setters for math mark. So I just check that out. So all that I do is check that math marks and click OK. And now there you go. So you have the getters and setters for mathematics marks created in here. I want them at the end of the method so I can do a cut, copy, paste or use alt down arrow. So I can use alt down arrow to move this to the end because I want the setters and getters also in the order of the order of the elements in this class so first is name so get this for name and next math marks so so on so now we have getters and setters for mathematics marks also uh, these are created automatically by eclipse so if you look at it it basically uh, returns math marks uh, the get math marks returns math marks and set math marks actually sets this dot math marks this is called math marks. This is automatically done by Eclipse. Uh, we did a right click, source, and generate getters and setters. Now that we have the code working, let's discuss about a few refactorings in the next screen. We are creating more videos as we speak. And if you want to stay updated, don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and feel free to share this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.